Hello crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I'll be turning these cans from trash to treasure using all of these fun items from the Dollar Tree. Now to all of my amazing subscribers and visitors, I wanted to say hey, hey, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you definitely should to see more great, fantastic ideas. So let's get started. Now the first project is a wood trimmed planter decor. I'm going to be starting off with one of these tall soup cans that I had on hand. I'm also going to be using one of these 60 count craft sticks from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to go ahead and open up those craft sticks and grab a bunch out. We don't even need half of this package, but you always want to get a full package so you could separate all of the warped pieces. Now we're going to be lining the outside of this can with these craft sticks. These are actually really good for this type of project. Now when I line these up, I'm going to line it up where the ends overlap. And you can use a couple of things to cut this. Now I prefer a sharp pair of scissors. That's what I used most often for these projects. I cut one end straight, use my pencil to mark the other end and then cut the other end straight. I'm doing a recheck of the measurement. And once it is the perfect size, I am using some wood hot glue to actually adhere this to my cans. I find this adhesive to be very good for these types of projects. So I'm just gonna adhere it to the side of the can, making sure it's as straight as possible. Now for the second craft stick, you're just going to lay it against the first with the ends overlapping. And again, I'm going to trace those end markings off to make sure we know where to cut. Now you can use scissors, you can use a utility blade, but this time I'm going to break out one of my new tools that I just got, which is this miter cutter. You could get this from Amazon. This is really fun and it actually is easier on the hands. So you lay it down on the miter cutter and press down and you can see it just snaps off the ends on those lines and then your hands don't get as tired. So I'm going to lay this on there. It is perfectly cut. And then I'm just going to adhere it around all the way around like I did before. And now we're done. So there is a tiny little sliver just left on there. And I'm just going to grab another one of those craft sticks and my utility blade to take care of this. So I'm using my metal ruler, laying it on top of one of those craft sticks and just cutting out the tiniest little piece. Now you only have to drag it across two or three times and then that piece will just come right off. And as you can see, it fits right down in that little opening. So that will be perfect to resolve this issue. I'm using my scissors to cut off the ends here and then I'm going to adhere it in place and again I'm going to be using my wood hot glue to do this just a nice thin little bead and then sliding it down in that gap and that resolves the issue and it looks perfect. Your whole can is nice and covered. So now's the fun part is staining. So what I decided to use was Waverly Antique Wax for my stain. You can of course use traditional stain or you can use diluted acrylic paint if you like to. So um, my Waverly Antique Wax was already diluted. I did put water in my container since I'm down to the very bottom, but I'm going to apply a coat all over the can. And as you can see, it has a really pretty color. Now make sure when you do finish, go over it with a paper towel to wipe off all of the excess wax this would allow it to dry a lot faster. So now that it's dry, we are going to trim it out with some ribbon. Now I have some grow grain ribbon here I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut two pieces around. Now the length um, is one time around plus about a half an inch so you'll have some overlap there and then it'll give you the perfect round. Now the effect I'm trying to achieve here is almost the look like one of those wood barrels. So I thought this would be the perfect accent. Now when you glue this on, you're gluing the ribbon on top of the other end. You're not actually gluing it to the wood. So this would allow you to make any adjustments by sliding it up and down, or you can actually remove it if you don't like it and your wood surface is not damaged. So I'm going to add this to both the top and the bottom, press it down and then make any adjustments. And now your can is ready for decoration once you get that in place. Now to decorate these, I'm just taking some of these little greenery bundles. I picked these up from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute. So I grabbed two of the greenery bundles and I stuck that inside. I think this is so adorable. 
And here it is, you guys, a beautiful wood trimmed planter that is great for any space. Now you can add any faux greenery of your choice or you can even use real plants. Just be sure to drill the drain holes in the bottom of your can. Now you guys have to let me know how you would decorate with this project in the comments below. So this project is a hanging decor piece. Now for this, we're going to need three of your regular size vegetable cans. And I'm going to need this three segment MDF wood piece that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. We're going to start off with our cans and I'm going to go ahead and spray paint them a couple of coats of this white. You could definitely use chalk paint or acrylic paint if you like, but spray paint was a lot quicker for me. Now here are all of our cans, all nice and spray painted and dried and ready to go. Now grab that three segment piece and we're going to start putting, um, making all the measurements for putting all of our cans on our piece. Now these segmented pieces come in this stained color that I'm using, white, and also natural so you can choose whichever ones you want. So I'm placing the cans on top and I'm trying to determine my spacing because I want room to put some greenery inside some of my cans. So I found that for the bottom can, I'm going to let the bottom tail of it kind of hang off about inch or inch and a half I thought that was perfect so in order to attach them I'm going to be drilling two holes in the back of the can right next to each other about an inch down as shown here if you don't have a drill no worries you can use a hammer and nail to get these holes in there it'll work the same way so what I did is I did two cans an inch down and the third can about an inch and a half to inch and in three quarters down because it has to be taller than the boards at the top so now we're going to make our holes in our three segment sign. So I'm laying my cans down and all I'm doing is taking a pencil and I'm transferring those drill holes onto the board. You do want to make sure that this is in the exact center. You can use a ruler to help. And as you can see, this top can goes above the top edge to allow for spacing. Now I did follow up with a little white marker so I could see my markings better. And then I'm just going to drill those holes as shown here and they're matching the can. So now we're ready to go. So to attach these, I'm just going to use some standard zip ties from the Dollar Tree. You can get these in black, white, and they even have green now. It doesn't matter. They won't be showing in your project. So I feed the zip tie through the back on one of the holes. I'm going to grab my can, feed it through one of the holes in the can. Then I'm going to loop it right around it through the other hole in the can. And once that is um, shimmied down a little bit, we can put that tail right back through the back of the sign. Oh, no worries. You see my sign came a little bit disconnected there. We're going to hot glue that back in place no worries but we're just going to zip tie and secure that in the back for this piece and we're going to repeat this for all of our pieces now we're going to grab our cans making sure that the um can with the taller spacing is at the top we're going to zip tie them on and then we're going to flip the whole thing over to make any kind of adjustments and we can tighten it at this point too So once mine are nice and tight, I go ahead and take my scissors and I clip off those tails. Flip that back over, make sure everything is sitting nice and even, which it is. I'm very happy with how this looks. Now I wanted to add some accents to my cans. This is going to be what I'm going to be adding are these labels. You can get these from the Dollar Tree. They have assorted shapes and sizes. I wanted to add one to each one of my cans because I didn't want to distress it this time, but I did want an accent. So I'm going to add one of these really cute chalkboard style labels to each one of my cans. You're just going to smooth them out, make sure they're nice and secured to the surface. And then I'm going to add greenery of choice into each one of the cans. You can add anything that you love for this. It's all up to you. I love these little bundles. I think they're the perfect little accent for this decor piece. And now you're ready to display. Now just go ahead and hang your piece up and place it on a display. I mean, how cute is this decor piece? 
Now, even though I place greenery in my can pieces, you can use this for organization in the kitchen, the craft room, or any other space of your choice. I really do hope you give this fun and easy project a try. Now this project is a marble style vanity decor piece. Now for this I'm using one of those family size vegetable cans. I'm going to be using some marble contact paper and you can get this from the Dollar Tree. And to accent it I'm going to be using some gold metallic acrylic paint. So I'm going to start off with my can and my metallic paint. I'm only going to be painting the top edge and the bottom edge with the metallic paint. Now I'm always going to shake up all of your acrylic paints when they've been sitting for a while. You want to make sure that color is nice and distributed. And I'm going to paint only the top and the bottom edge. Now I did have to put on several coats of this gold. So you can opt for spray paint or even use some Cricut vinyl or something like that if you want to. But it did take me three coats to get this solid coverage. So once that has dried, we are ready to add some marble accents to our can. So I'm going to go ahead and measure the can to make sure I have my piece cut wide enough. And I found it three to three and a quarter inches was just about my comfortable spot with cutting the width of this marble stick and peel sheet. So I'm measuring it out, making sure the line is going to be nice and straight. And then to cut it is really easy. I'm just going to be using a utility blade. This um, vinyl does cut really simple. It's actually really, really cute. I'm really surprised that Dollar Tree now has marble. So I'm excited to use this in one of my projects. So now that it's cut and good to go, we can start adding this to our can. Now a good way to line this up and get it um, applied is I like to start at the seam of the can to make sure it's even all the way around. And then I will go in and start peeling away and applying it small bits at a time. I find that it makes it very easy. So I'm just going to start applying it really, really carefully, wrapping it around the can, peeling away the bottom. Now for the overlap, you only want it overlapping about a half an inch because you don't want too much bulk. So it's easy just to cut it away with a pair of scissors and smooth it down. And now just make sure everything is nice and adhered. And oh my goodness, now you have a gold trimmed marble container. And look at how super sweet it turned out. Now all I did was take some Dollar Tree roses and I placed them inside for a cute little arrangement. Now you could use this as a planter or even for things like makeup brushes on your vanity. And of course, if you want to keep it neutral, you can just add regular plants, you can add supplies, you can use kitchen utensils, it's all up to you. I hope that you give this one a try. Now this project is a planter wall sconce decor. Now I'm going to be needing two regular size vegetable cans. And I'm going to need one garden fence section from the Dollar Tree or you can get them for a dollar at Family Dollar. Now I'm going to start off with the fence section for this project. Now I only need two sections for this project and I want them to be as perfect as possible. So I'm going to use the end sections. So I'm just going to cut off each end section wider than that line because I'll just do some manual trimming. And I like to do this with a sharp pair of scissors. Now I realize that some of people have some trouble cutting these with their scissors, but you could use scissors, a hot knife, you can use wire clippers, anything that makes you feel more comfortable and makes it easier on you. So I'm just going to cut off those two end pieces, remove those stakes from the bottom and all of the little eclipses. Now this is probably one of my favorite little tools here. This is a miniature wire clipper or a jewelry wire clipper and it gets in those small little spots without making it look too jagged. And here is what the end project is. It is two easy and clean cut fence pieces. So now I'm just going to go ahead and scoot those to the side and start working on my cans. 
Now you can paint these if you want to, but I didn't want the ridges to show. So what I decided to use was some of this Dollar Tree faux leather in the color white. I thought that would be perfect for covering up the cans and you don't see none of those ridges on there if you don't want to see them. So I'm measuring out the length of the can here. And again, I'm just gonna take my metal ruler, make sure I get that measurement down and then cut it with a utility blade. These utility blades come in handy for so many things and it cuts through this faux leather like butter. So now I'm just double checking to make sure it fits and we are going to be needing two strips of these. So I'm gonna cut a second one out. And now it's time to cover our cans. So to cover them is really, really easy. I like to, of course, just add a bead of that hot glue on there, line it up as even as possible. And then I'm just wrapping the leather around. Now I wouldn't suggest putting beads around as you go because it leaves a little lump where that hot glue is. I only glue it at the beginning and at the end. You just wanna make sure that your leather is pulled really, really tight. So once you get your half inch overlap, add some glue there. There, press it down and now it's smooth all the way around your can now you can go back and do a little housekeeping and clean up around the edges if you need to but this turns out really well and here are both cans all completely covered now I love this little ticking stripe ribbon. It almost looks like film. I know a lot of you have said it looks like film, but I think it's so cute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to wrap around my cans and I am gonna cut it, cut four of these pieces out, making sure I have a half inch overlap. Now sometimes this grow gray ribbon can fray, so I'm using my lighter. This is just an easy way to seal off the ends and keep it from fraying once you add it to your project. And now we could just add it to the can. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it near the top. Again, you wanna pull it really tight and when you do adhere it, you're gonna adhere one end of the ribbon on top of the actual ribbon, not to the leather. This allows you room to kind of move it around, shift it if you need to, and even slide it off if you don't want it on there anymore. So I love projects with flexibility like this. And we're gonna do two of these ribbons for each one of the cans and here is what they look like. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over to the back where the seam is and we're going to be drilling two holes in the back here. We're gonna drill them up right in the center of the back of the can where that seam is. And of course, if you don't have a drill, a hammer and nail will do the job, but always think about getting a drill because it makes your project so much easier. So I'm using a 532nd inch drill bit here and I'm going to make two holes as shown here side by side about an inch apart or so. So we're gonna do this for both of the cans and we're going to drill right through the leather all the way through the can. Grab some of those zip ties. This is how we are going to be attaching these to those fence pieces. So to attach these, what we're going to do is we're going to feed the zip tie through the back of the can first. And once we feed it through in, we're just gonna loop it around and go back out the other hole that's right beside it. So now that that kind of grabs onto the can, we're just gonna shift it down and make sure everything is nice and flush. So we're gonna do this for both of our cans and now grab those fence pieces. We are gonna attach each can to the front of the fence piece and then wrap that zip tie around that center piece as shown here. Now, once you feed it through, you do wanna pull your zip tie as tight as possible because you want this can to be nice and sturdy attached to your garden fence piece. So you just wanna pull it through, just kinda of make sure it's nice and secure there. Go ahead and test it out by giving it a shake and mine is very secure there, it's not going anywhere. Go ahead and do that for your second one as well. So now all you have to do is make any final adjustments and tightening, go ahead and just start clipping off those tails on the back. Now once I do that, I wanted to reinforce it just a little bit. I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to add glue right under that zip tie along the back of that fence piece. Now what this does is keep this zip tied piece in place and keeps it from sliding up and down. That way it stays secure and you don't have to worry about it shifting. We're gonna do this for each one of our garden fence pieces. Now here are both pieces. They're all nice and secure to the back. And now the fun part is decorating.
Now, how simple was that? You have two beautiful wall planters now. Now, I love the clean look and simplicity of these, and they can be neutral, or you can even add some seasonal filler, like for Halloween or Christmas, or even any holiday that you want to. There are so many options for these items, and I hope that this inspires you to get it recreated. Now, this project is a two-piece container set. We're gonna need one of these tall soup cans and one regular veggie can. We're gonna need two wood slices and these are sold in the Dollar Tree in two packs. And we're gonna grab a pack of these wood acorns from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna grab those two cans first and give them a nice coat or two of some white spray paint, acrylic paint, or chalk paint. Now while those dry, go ahead and grab those wood rounds. These are actually gonna work as lids for our cans. So in order to have a, a little knob on our lids, I thought these acorns would be perfect for that. So I'm gonna grab two of these acorns and um, I'm gonna um, add them to the top. Now what I did notice is I wanted them to lay flush to the wood, but you notice there's a little nub at the bottom of the acorn. Easy, res easy to resolve. All we're gonna do is grab some high grit sandpaper, a 40, 60, even 100, and just grind the bottom of that acorn down until it's nice and smooth and flush as shown here. So now these are prepared and ready to add to our wood slices. We're gonna add one to each of the centers of this. Now, preferably I would screw these in from the bottom, but for the sake of time, and since this is a lightweight project, I am going to use wood glue. You guys, I love this wood glue from the Dollar Tree. It works as good as the Gorilla Glue on any name brand. So I'm gonna add wood glue to the center there, and then I'm gonna add my acorn on top of that wood glue. Now you wanna let this sit and dry for three, four hours to make sure it's completely dry and adhered. And once it is, this acorn will stay in place. It's nice and secure, great for lightweight projects. So now grab those cans. You see they're all nice and dry now and we are going to be adding some labels. Now originally, I wanted to use these neutral labels from the Dollar Tree, but they were kind of small. So I made my own out of craft paper and I just freehanded this little design here. I kind of like the little arch in the middle. So that's what I'm gonna add, but I am gonna add an accent to it. I love ticking stripes. So I'm taking a chalk marker and I'm just adding ticking stripes all the way around my little arched label piece just to give it a different accent. And so here are both of my pieces. They're all ready to go. And now we can add them to our cans. Now to add them is really simple. I just like to use some hot glue. I just wanna make sure I go around as close to the edge as possible to make sure it lays completely fat, flat. And you can align them using the ridges of the can. So once we add these to both of them, I am loving this. I wanted to have these very neutral so I can use them year round. And now just grab your wood slice rounds. You can place one on top. Now, of course, you can probably use some nautical or jute rope on the inside of these wood rounds to kind of make a ledge. But since this is going to be sitting or filled on my shelves, I didn't find a need to add it, but definitely add it if you're worried about your lids sliding off. And how simple was that? So now you have beautiful, two beautiful cans and containers with a minimal touch for your decor. Now you can add greenery if you like, you can use these for storage, however you choose to use them. They would make a really cute accent all year round. Now I do hope you guys have as much fun as I did creating these. Now listen, all of these budget-friendly DIYs are so sweet, but let me know in the comments which one was your favorite today. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy crafting as much as I do, and share this video with your friends that love to craft too. Now check me out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for even more projects and random giveaways. And don't forget to subscribe to see more. It's absolutely free. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.